Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. So here we've got a form that we've created in Dreamweaver, say XHTML form, and we're looking to validate it in a quick and easy way. And Dreamweaver has some very easy solutions for validation. And these are what are referred to as client-side validation tools. And the difference between client-side, well, the other kind of validation is server-side validation. And the difference between client-side and server-side validation is basically client-side validation happens on the user's computer. Server-side validation happens on using your server. So basically, server-side validation can be worked into the PHP form, for instance, that processes this uh, form or the ASP script or whatever. It can be worked into that script and validated using that instead of some client side requiring on, requiring the user's computer to validate the form for them. However, using server side validation, while it is much more powerful, it uh, is much harder to use, especially if you're just starting out with web design and you're not very proficient using you know any kind of. Um, well, I shouldn't say and. There are a lot of people that are not just starting out and are not proficient with you know, PHP or ASP or JSP or any of those uh, languages that you would be using to process a form. So how do we do this? Well, Dreamweaver makes it very easy. And actually, there are a bunch of different ways to do this. But before we get started with that, I just want to let you know that validating a form is a pretty vital task, something you definitely, definitely, definitely want to make sure that you perform with your web forms. You want to make sure you validate them before an email gets sent off to you. Why? Well, for one, it prevents people from filling out anything or nothing into the input text fields and you know, it basically ensures that you're going to get a meaningful email from people who are actually serious about emailing you. Now, there are ways to kind of cheat around the um, validation tools, but for the most part, 95% of people using the web don't know how to do that, so you don't really have to be worried about that. It will significantly, you know, cut down on all that kind of stuff. As well as, you know, people who, you know, don't mean to do anything if they accidentally leave the .com off the end of their email address, you know, just have a little reminder that pops up and says, hey, it's not a valid email address. They'll look at it and probably immediately see their mistake and they'll correct it and, you know, keeps you from getting mixed up, keeps them from sending you the wrong information. So let's take a look at uh, how to use this validation. All right, we got our contact page open. We're going to start by using a behavior that reacts on blur. What is on blur? Well, let me just show you. First thing we need to do is select a text field. I'm just going to select the email input field in my form. And I'm going to come up here to window and I'm going to choose my uh, behaviors panel right here. Shift F4. Now, the behaviors panel, before I click it, is actually located under the tag inspector right there behaviors. You got the attributes and behaviors tabs. We're using behaviors. I'm going to click this little plus and select validate form. Now here the validate form dialog box pops up. The field we want to validate is simply the input or yeah, the input email field. We want the value to be required and uh, or yeah, we want it to be required, excuse me. And we do not want it to just accept anything. We want it to accept an email address. Now, the specifying email address over anything is important because email address will check to make sure that there's an at symbol in there and that there's a period in there, okay? And that there's stuff in between them. So it you know keeps people from really just being able to send any anything they want in the email field. So hit OK and let's check to see how that works. I'm going to save this. Just hit F12 to pop it out into my browser. I'm going to just type the name Nathaniel into the email address field and I'm going to hit send email. Now here it is giving me all kinds of errors because I already have behavior set up. Let me just come into here, get rid of this other behavior that I was messing around with before. All right, save it now. Pop it back out into our browser and type my name into there. And notice that when I just click away from it, if I come into here and I hit tab to go to the next one, and then it pops up and tells me, hey, you need to put an email address in this email field. That's what on blur does. As soon as you change the focus of wherever you are in this field, it validates. Okay, now notice it doesn't do it with full name because we haven't set anything up to validate on blur. Basically, when I select out of email, it validates the email field. Now, if you can imagine, if you have a text field with let's say 25, 30, maybe more input areas, and you validate everything on blur, as the person continues to make mistakes, they get more and more frustrated, and nine chances out of ten, they're just gonna click out of your site out of complete aggravation because they keep having these little errors popping up in their face every time they try to go on to the next field. So it's better to just validate the entire form 
in one shot right at the end. Now, Dreamweaver does have these new spry tools, and one of them allows you to validate your form fields, and it has kind of a neat, unique, interesting way of validating on Blur. But we're not going to get into that here because spry is for another day. I'm just going to focus on the JavaScript and Dreamweaver behaviors. All right, let me select this text field. I'm going to right click here and just delete this behavior. When you click away, the behavior disappears. Now, I'm going to be, uh, excuse me, behavior, validate this entire form on the click of this button. So when this button gets clicked, I want it to validate the form. So I'm going to select the button and I'm going to choose, I'm going to click the arrow and choose validate form. Now here, I am going to validate multiple things when this button's clicked. For instance, I want to make sure that an email address is in there, so email address is required. Notice I've got the little asterisk there and the little note, asterisks are required fields, asterisk, 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 asterisk. So email, full name, pick a number, and between one and five, I want them all to be required. So email is going to be a required field, and it needs to be an email address. Name also is going to be a required field. This, however, is going to be anything. Any characters can be typed into here because names can range from anything to anything, really. They can just, they're, they're all over the board. Then pick a number is required, and I want this to be a number. Then input 23, and I'll, I named this input 23 just to be an example because I just felt like naming it that. So we've got input 23, which is the between 1 and 5. Okay, but note, you did not know what input 23 was until I mentioned it. That is, unless you looked ahead and saw that the last area was text area comments and kind of drew the conclusion that between 1 and 5 is the only one left. So we've got input 23. I'm going to do number from 1 to 5. Did okay. okay. Let's save this thing. Take it out onto the web and see what we've got. Let's just type my name in here again. Not a valid email address. Full name, we're not going to type anything in there. Pick a number, we're going to type G1, and between 1 and 5, we're going to choose 8. Comments, we can just type hey or anything we want. That's not even being validated. You don't even need to include comments. And then send email. Okay, the following errors. Email must contain an email address. A name is required. Pick a number must contain a number. And input 23 must contain a number between 1 and 5. Well, if I'm a user looking at this, all the rest of these make sense. Email, name, pick a number. But then input 23, what is that? Now, again, you know what it is because I just explained to you that it's 1 to 5, and really there aren't too many other choices to pick from. But imagine again that you have a form that's maybe got 25 different pieces of information you're trying to extract from somebody. Input 23 does not make much sense at all. So how do we change the name that JavaScript displays? Well, it's pretty simple. The name JavaScript displays is the ID of the form field that you are using. For instance, if I select between 1 and 5 and look in the ID area, I can see that it's input 23. I'm going to switch this to between underscore 1, underscore 5. Let's save it. Go back out onto the web. And uh, I'm just going to type Nathaniel at what.com. And my name. And I'm going to pick a number, let's say 8. And between 1 and 5, I'll choose 3. And now I'll send an email. And you can see it all works. Now, if I just between 1 and 5, if I type R, okay, you're going to see pick a number is required, and for some reason R is allowing that to pass. So let's just let's say Nate, Nate, pick a number, I'll say T1, and a number between 1 and 5, let's say 7. Okay, again, oh yes, I know what's happening, right? How did I mess that up? All right, well, hey, this will work into the whole video. Because we have changed the name of this text field ID, we need to go change the behavior because the behavior is still referencing that input 23 field and between 1 and 5 is simply being ignored. So how do we edit the behavior? Well, pretty simple. Select that send email button. Here we go. On click. I'm just going to double click on that little cog wheel. Now here it immediately gives me an error and says the field input 23 could not be found. So I'm just going to say okay, whatever, I don't care. I know I got rid of it. And you can see it's no longer in here, but also between 1 and 5 is allowed to accept anything. So there's exactly why that was just accepting R. I should have known that. So now value required, and this is a number from 1 to 5. Hit OK. Let's save this bad boy, take him out on the web, F12. And now we can put R in here. And hey, between 1 and 5 must contain a number. So that it works when you do things the right way. So we can pick a number here, we can say 66, we can say 3, we can just type anything we want here, we can say it at da -da 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 com, and we can type anything we want over here. Send email, and it works, 
just like it should. So it's that easy to validate a form using your Dreamweaver JavaScript-based behaviors, and a little bit of client-side val form validation is, uh, is a breeze. So that's how you do it. I hope you learned something from this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please go check out the website. That's www.tutvid.com. Thank you very much for watching.